Thank you all for coming to our talk about the uh, Mike Ryan Freightliner Banks lunacy that we run at Pikes Peak. And Mike also drifts and does other equally impressive stunts. I want to, before we talk about the power and uh, the seem a part of this, uh, I'd like Mike to talk to to you about the experience of what he does. And I want to preface this with, he just finished a few weeks on Pikes Peak, maybe a few months. Uh, okay to talk about that? Sure. Yeah, three, uh, weeks. Three, weeks. three weeks filming Fast and Furious uh, 7. So when you see the big black bus seemingly in a foreign country, it's Mike at the wheel and he's on yeah. Pikes Peak. Yeah, and, 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 and you got to see Fast and Furious 7, that's all. I mean, it's nuts. Universal had that check coming to you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Universal. At least I get a free dinner. So here's Mike Ryan. Hi, well thank you for being here, it's pretty awesome. And uh, Gail, I mean, I, I don't know how more lucky a guy could get than to have his race car at SEMA and have it out here on the front porch. <laughs> So thank you. Um, you know, this has been our 16th year of racing semi-trucks at Pikes Peak. And the fun part of me, for me, is, is A, being able to do it, and, and B, seeing who gets involved and, and the evolution of the truck. Apparently, uh, we've dropped the class record uh, more than any other class at Pikes Peak since before World War II. So three minutes and 10 seconds in, uh, in that 15, 16 year period of time. This year, I think we would have seen another solid minute come off, yes. largely attributed to what Gail and his people have done to this truck. It's um, night and day different than, than what it was in 2012, and uh, now I'm fully terrified of it. <laughs> and uh, and it's, uh, it's just amazing to get a chance to experience. You know, I, I look around this show and I see all these Camaros and old 70s stuff that I can kind of relate to. And, then I see new stuff here and I feel lost and I feel old and, and just behind it. And then when I get into this truck, all that same technology is over here now. So it's been a pretty steep learning curve just to understand what's now taken place. But I think uh, with some good luck and some good weather this next coming year, as long as he brings his guys, because I don't know how to work on it anymore, yeah. um, then I think we're going to see some pretty good things happen at Mike's Peak. We're trying to uh, shoot our next Size Matters video. The current one's been up for about three years. It's had about 1.7 million views. Um, so we're getting ready to do another one of those, hopefully in January, that will really be outstanding. And uh, I think everybody will end up liking that a lot. So uh, please tell them about what you've done to this, because it's I still keep wanting to hear more about it as well. All right. And, and we're, we're going to be doing more. Uh, basically, this is a super turbo. Uh, it's a 14-liter Detroit diesel engine. It's a, mar it's a marine build, so its stock power output is 825 horsepower at about 2,100 RPM. We have taken it from that point uh, to 2,400 horsepower at 2,700 RPM. And once we turn on our straight shot water methanol system, it goes to 2,800 horsepower. So what we've leveraged is a package we did for the Navy on some uh, combatant craft. These are boats uh, that, that use engines that we designed back in 2002. And those are Cummins-based 780 horse marine engines. Now, we just tested it down San Diego way, uh, the, the concept of a V8 marine engine with a supercharger feeding two turbochargers. The whole idea is to burn all the diesel fuel and no smoke. When I met Mike on the, on the mountain two years ago, there was a smoke issue. And I said to Mike, that's horsepower in the air. When you inject fuel in an engine, it says in the Bible, you use it there. 
you don't put it in the air. That's nothing to be proud about. So I, I kind of, over a period of months, convinced him that we had a system that worked. It worked very well in the boats for the Navy, so... i got to jump in on one second. So, I just set a record on Pikes Peak. I come down to our pit. Everybody's there doing the rah, rah, rah. And he walks up and he goes, you know, I can make your truck faster and cleaner. And I looked at him like, who are you? What's, you know, so, what's wrong with this guy? But, uh, yeah. but he absolutely yeah. proved himself correct. And, uh, you know, it's been an awesome ride so far. Well, you know, uh, I feel the same way. It's, it's a, a cool association. Um, I think Mike is in that top, top echelon of all the guys who've ever driven on Pikes Peak. It, it, the vehicle doesn't matter. What you do with the vehicle is what matters. And uh, so, <laughs> you buying me dinner? Yeah. So, so at the, at the bottom line was, finally he came around to believing what worked in that boat for the Navy would work in this truck. So we've got an 8.3 liter screw supercharger, which is that noisy rascal you just heard. And it's pretty special on Pikes Peak because they really hear you coming. And they're, they're all over that. Uh, after he ran this year, coming down the mountain, the fans all came out and mobbed the truck all 12 and a half miles down to the pits. It was in, in, insane how popular this thing is. Because it's it's sick and wrong. Who would want to drive a semi up Pikes Peak? <laughs> no, that's really nuts. So I've got his disease now. The supercharger feeds into a large turbocharger that we nip, nicknamed that turbocharger Kong. And the turbocharger feeds into a, a large charger cooler in the nose of the truck. There's water methanol throughout to control temperatures and air density and make the, the thing run clean and safe from the bottom to the top. We also leverage the system to cool the brakes, to mist the inner cooler, to super chill it, all based on a closed loop temp sensing system. So there's a lot of technology that's kind of new. The super turbo thing is, is not a new invention for us. You just don't see people doing it. It's, it turns out it's kind of tough to manage. So we've come up with a methodology to, to, to run the system, to compensate for the altitude change. And we originally went to Pikes Peak because I was working on turbocharging the Humvees for Afghanistan. And the people the people that asked me to do that said, we get as high as 14,000 feet. I, I'm going, where the heck can I duplicate that? Well then, it hit me, Pikes Peak. It is the second oldest race in the United States. It has insane heritage with major families dominating that, that mountain, starting with the Unser's. And the Dolan box, are, they're, they're now kind of moving in and taking over. So we were able to come up with our turbo management for Afghanistan, if I speak, on Paul Dolenbach's unlimited 1,400 horsepower twin turbo setup that we did. This, to me, is a test bed for uh, numerous things. Uh, we want to look at differing fuel types. Uh, I, want, I want to do a hybrid version of this. That's really big on my plate is the thing will be a lot quicker off the turns it's two years from now after we put the hybrid set up on it. Uh, I heard it so, here first, folks. <laughs> yeah. The hybrid is a performance tool, by the way. Uh, you know, it's especially off turns are coming out of the hole. So, what you're looking at is a test bed for us and for Detroit Diesel and for Daimler and Freightliner. Uh, there's a lot of leveraging new technologies. Uh, this coming year, we will run this 60 series engine and then go to new technology. Uh, 
and I think Bosch is going to join us in that effort on the fuel injection technology side because it's all new. Uh, what Don, what Daimler has come up with. Right. So. Yeah, and Mike has a little a little add on that point. Well, the you know the thing of, of being Freightliner's poster child for the last 15 years is it's really introduced me to the trucking world, which most of us don't really care about, and neither did I until it really sunk home that 93% of everything we consume in the United States has been on a truck at one point or another. We are a truck-based society. So, you know, as you look at all the political proponents out there of all these different fuels and all the, you know, everything from the cylindras and all the failures, there's also some tremendous successes out there. And I think as we see some of the natural gas coming into place, you know, what Gail's done with the uh, water methanol injection, there's propane, there's all kinds of alternatives out there, and I think that maybe the truck of the future, possibly the car of the future, is going to have some sort of multi-fuel situation. Yeah. So to be able to take it into an extreme environment like Pikes Peak, I also ran Bonneville for five years and we're having conversations about what a future technology innovation truck in a Bonneville environment might look like. Um, that's a fascinating step where it feels like you're doing more than just racing and having a good time. It's it's really testing this stuff, developing it, you know, with his resources and manufacturing background and the engineers around him. The stuff that comes out of there is phenomenal. So to be a part of something like that really validates this whole program for me. And and, uh, and I think it's an interesting future, as all of us are gearheads here, yeah. to see what that next thing beyond a holly carburetor and a set of hooker headers will do for you, you know? <laughs> Gary Hooker. So, we're leveraging a racing vehicle to, to develop future technology. We are, are announced here at this show, uh, our powertrain business, uh, we're releasing uh, engines, transmissions, transfer cases that we've been do doing for military applications. We've been in that business since 1976. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, but some of it's leaked here and there. Uh, the hybrid technology in a military vehicle is extremely important uh, because we can run the vehicle silently for a distance uh, just on the motor generator unit. And that's hugely uh, uh, advantageous if you, do, if you don't want people to know you're coming. And uh, so you it's going to- start this and just scare them to death. Yes, <laughs> or they'll, they'll just leave, right? Okay. So we've always, in, in, in our company at, at Banks, leveraged racing to advance technology that we use everywhere. Racing is accelerated deterioration. That's what I call it. And uh, ultimately, we run NATO tests of wide open throttle for 400 hours uh, for our land based engines and 800 hours of wide open throttle full power for our marine engines. There's nothing sitting in this parking lot, including this truck, that will do that. So we know about durability. Uh, of course, this is a racing vehicle, not a 400 hour wide open throttle test vehicle. So being a futurist, and Mike's completely open to future technologies, Absolutely. which is an enlightened viewpoint, makes this a, a, a really good partnership. And uh, you know, watch for his next Size Matters video because we're gonna both be in on this one. So thank you. If there are any questions, I'm open for questions and so is Mike. We love Mike Ryan.